Now, I will be the big man here and admit I've struggled heavily with understanding um, the difference between, you know, like a regular script and a local script, right? Now, there are, there are also module scripts, which I, I made a video on those, so, you know, you can go watch that, uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, so, you know, what are local scripts? How do you actually properly use them? So right now, as I'm hovering the button, uh, this box opened up and it's saying that this is a script that runs on clients, not servers and these scripts will only run when they're parented or like when they're inside one of the following so either a player's backpack their character their player gui their player script or the box on the way the replicated first service right so how it seems to work right so for example replicated first if i were to create a local script inside of this right and then i were to say yeah okay i would print hello world right and then I were to make another local script, but this time in the workspace, which does the same thing, right? And so I can name this one workspace script. And then, so this one is going to be our local script. This one's going to be the workspace script. Then if I were to play the game, right? And then we look here. As you can see, only one of them prints hello world and it's our local script. So it's not the workspace script, it's the local script. Now, something I'm actually a little curious about is would a script run if it's inside replicated storage? So it ran inside replicated first and it doesn't. Okay, that is very interesting. Okay, yeah, so so yeah, so local scripts do have certain parameters like where they're allowed to be ran, right? And there are reasons for this. So it probably would, I feel like it'd be smarter for me to get into like how local scripts actually function first and then explain to you where you can run them later. But I feel like just kind of, knowing this i think will give you like a better understanding of like like how they work because sometimes you can explain how local script works and people just don't fully get it because like they haven't actually seen any examples of it so as an example like i said um a local script will only run when it's when the player has access to it right when it's inside of the player and you, you can actually see this if you just run the game right if you just run the game and you know check out our player the player has these scripts, right? So in, so the player has this thing called player script, which these are here by default, right? So, so this is just Roblox characters and Roblox players have scripts by default. So this is scripts loader. This just loads scripts. This is the character sound. So like it, this is responsible for playing sounds. This is like a whole module. You know, there's like a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of random stuff here. So they have these functions, this, that. I don't even know what this does, right? But again, the point is, they're inside of this player. Um, so yeah, so let's actually begin making a local script inside starter player scripts, right? So you can do this inside of either starter character scripts or starter player scripts. So for example, if I were to make, okay, let me see. Yeah, player's character or the player GUI. Okay, so a local script, because like I showed you, you know, when we ran the game and you had like, you know, your player with the script, putting a, putting a local script inside of here will like whenever a new player joins it's going to take this script it's going to clone it and it's going to put it inside of that player's player g i mean player script right but then player starter character script uh if you put a local script inside of this it's going to put it like this local script inside of the player's character right which is so let me let me let me show you real quick right um yeah there we go and as you can see both of them are working so the player in the player script we have our local script right and then in the player's character which is their physical appearance we also have the local script right so so basically starter players starter player script put like you know copies the scripts inside of the player script and then starter character scripts put clones the script inside of the player character right very simple now okay i'm going to remove it from starter character what is the big difference between server and local, right? I do have a video on this, but I'll, I'll quickly mention. In short, the server is just the general truth of the game, right? So the server script is responsible for the actual game, right? Like for example, if I make a script inside, you know, server script service, you know, it's a regular server script. This script is going to be responsible for just the entire game, right? While a local script is only responsible for what we as the player perceive to be true, right? So let me let me show you something real quick. 
if I actually no, real quick, right? What local scripts are able to do is we're able to know what player they're attached to. So we can say local player is equal to game dot players dot local player. So this is going to give us the player, right? So, so now we, we know the player, but on the server script, it's not server, like server scripts aren't about players. They're about the game, right? So if I were to do the same thing of like, oh yeah, local player is equal to game dot players. It doesn't have that. So it does, it doesn't allow us to get the local player because it's not about local players. Like a, like a local script is, it is inside a player, right? So it knows, you know, like, like it knows what player it's running for, but the server script isn't running for a player it's running for just the entire game in general right so you know that 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 i hope that somewhat makes sense um and i can show you something as well if i create a part over here right in the workspace um and then let's say in yes yeah, so, you know we have we have our local script i'll just delete this line um if let's say i wanted to change this part's color inside of a script right so to make things easier, I'm just going to make a variable. So local part is equal to workspace, wait for child part. And I'll just copy this line over here as well. If inside of the server script, I say, okay, parts.color is equal to color3.new, um, I don't know, purple, sure, right, whatever. So we're not doing anything on the local script, just on the server script. So we're saying, okay, part.color is going to be this pink, right? And right now it's white. So the script's going to run, and as you can see, it is pink. Wonderful. Now, as you can see on top, currently it says we're like observing the game through our clients, right? So, so as so like this blue window represents our clients, and this like green thing represents the server, right? So right now we're seeing, like as the client, we're seeing the part as purple because whenever the server makes a change, the server replicates all of those changes to the players, right? So if the server says, okay, change the parts color to purple, then it sends a message to every client, which tells them to also change like this to purple, right? This is basically just how games work, right? Whenever I, as the client make a change, like, you know what, let's say I move, right? Let's say like I click the D key on my laptop. I'm doing that on the clients, right? And then the client will send a message to the server saying, hey, listen, like we're moving right now. And then the server will say, okay, you're moving. And then the server will then tell all, tell all the other players to let them know that, hey, this player is moving. So then all the other clients will get that message and then they will, you know, detect wherever you are and then they will, you know, make you move for the other players, right? That's kind of how things work, basically. And so if I click this, so right now we are on the server. So we're observing the game, not through the player's eyes, but just through the server, how things actually are. And as you can see, yeah, so the part is pink, you know, it's pink for us. Everything's great. But then what if I move the line over here? What if instead of changing it on the server, I change it locally? This is where it gets a little bit more confusing, but like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll explain everything. Everything seems to be fine, right? It's pink, you know, we see it as pink. So, you know, our local script has made the parts color to be pink. And so our client sees it as pink, but if I go on the server, it is not pink. It, it is not, like it's not pink, it's white, right? Because we haven't changed it on the server. We only changed it on the client. And so for example, right? Um, if only, like, 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 like because the script is inside starter player script, it means that like every single player who joins is going to get like this script. So for every single player, it's going to be pink. But let's say if only only this player, if only if let's say there was like 30 other people and only I had this local script, which would change the color, then all of the other players would still see it as white. Only I would see it as pink. So what local scripts allow you to do is basically change how a specific player views the game, right? Because right now I see it as pink while someone else may see it as, as red or like as white or, you know, whatever color we, we decide, you know? So you, I think of it, think of it like, like someone who's colorblind, for example, right? Like let's take a red apple, right? So on the server, maybe the apple is red, for example, but then to the man who's colorblind, the apple is pink, right? And neither are wrong. Like the apple is red. That's a fact. But the man sees the apple is pink. That's a fact, right? So that's kind of 
how I tend to describe local versus server to people, right? Um, and let's see, is there anything else that I need to show you? I guess one more thing also would be the like how these scripts communicate to, from one another, right? So you can create this thing and you you people put this in replicated storage usually. So I, I'll put it in replicated storage as well. Uh, because because this just gives both the server and the client access to this remote event, which is great because we want both of them to have access, right? Because both the local script and the server script need to use this remote event to send messages from, you know, like to the other script. So what our remote event allows you to do is it, is it allows, for, for example, the server script to send a message to the remote event, which then gets sent to the local script and vice versa. So you can send a message from the local script to the server, right? And remember that example I used when like, oh yeah, when the player moves, it sends a message to the server, right? That's what's happening here. So let's say whenever I click the D key, the client says, okay, the player's moving. And so it's sending the message to the server. And then the server, you know, does like security checks to make sure that the player isn't like hacking or exploiting the game. You know, like the player isn't like flying when they're not supposed to or whatever. And then once the server checks that everything is all right, then it says, okay, everything's fine. And then it sends a message back to every single player and tells them to like, okay, hey, this player is moving. So make sure to, you know, draw, you know, play the animations for the player and, you know, play all the sounds and everything because this player is supposed to be moving. So show that player as moving, right? Um, and so if I wanted to, let's say, send a message from one of the scripts, I would say something like, um, I'll just make a variable for the event as well. So let's say local event is equal to game dot replicated storage, wait for child remote event. Oh wait, my bad. There we go. Let's copy this over. There we go. Um, so hey, how this would work is I would say, okay, events, and then I would say fire server. And so this would fire the server. And then to actually like catch this, like like ping, catch this message, I would say events dot on server event, right? And so this will run whenever like a local script says fire server. So then I can connect this to a function, which will give me the player, right? Who, so like this will give me the player who actually called the message. So this is how the server knows what player is doing what, right? Because it knows what player is sending them messages. Um, and then, or vice versa, what you, what you could also do is you could say, um, instead of firing the server, you could say fire or no event by your clients, right? So from, from the server script this time, I can fire the client. But be, because this is a server script, it actually asks us to like specify who do we fire to, or, you know, like what player do we fire to, right? Um, and then here we would do like events on clients event, connect function. Um, and this time we don't need, we don't, like it doesn't give us the player because we know the player, right? Like we local scripts know the player. So like we, we, we don't have to, get the player from here, right? Uh, or you could do fire all clients, right? So th this will fire to every single player, right? Which in this case, obviously, you don't need to give it the player if it fires to every single player. Fairly simple, right? Um, well, yeah, that's basically it. You know, hopefully that helps. Again, if I got something wrong, you know, correct me in the comments. Um, if you need help, leave a comment, you know, join the Discord server or whatever. Check out the newsletter in the comments. And yeah, thank you for watching.